Welcome back to Ralph's Sort of True Stories. You know, as I've been getting older, I've been going to the doctors a whole lot more. As you, as you can see, I've uh, recently had a little trip and fall. And uh, older folks do go to doctors more, but I, you know, I know all of you do. So all of you probably had some of these experiences. And I, I thought I would share some of them with you. You know, the first doctor I went to wasn't even a medical doctor like this kind of doctor. He was a psychiatrist. And you see, as, as a lot of kids, you know, always worried about having a monster under their bed. Well, I was one of those kids. I always thought there was a monster under my bed, but the strange thing was, I didn't grow out of it. When I was in my early 20s, I still thought there was a monster under my bed. And as a result, I didn't get very good sleep. And by not getting very good sleep, I would occasionally nod off at work. Well, you know, if you're trying to climb the corporate ladder, nothing off at work is not part of the recommended plan. So I decided to go see the psychiatrist to see if I could get it fixed. And uh, he said, well, yeah, we, we could do that. He says, uh, it'd take up to three hours and, and you'd have to come to see me uh, twice a week. He said, and that's uh, $50 a session. So uh, $50 a session is $100 a week. By about 50 weeks in a year is about $5,000. And so uh, that means that over a three year period, uh, I'm calculating all this in my head, it's gonna be about $15,000. I mean, I didn't have that kind of money. So I said, well, doc, uh, it's an interesting proposition. Let me think about it and I'll get back to you. Well. I was in quite a dilemma, so, you know, I went down to the corner bar and, <laughs> I mean, this has solved some dilemmas. So I got to talk to the bartender and uh, went home after that. And about four months later, I see this psychiatrist on the street and he says, Ralph, he said, uh, that issue you came to me about with the, with the monsters, he said, uh, you still got a problem with that? I said, no, no, sir, no, I didn't. I don't have a problem, that's all been taken care of. He said, well, how is that done? I said, well, I went down to the corner bar and talked to the bartender, and he solved it for me. He said, well, that guy is not professionally trained. How could he do what I couldn't do? I said, well, you're gonna charge me $15,000, and I bought a few whiskeys and spent about $10, and he said, well, shit. He said, son, if you're scared of monsters under your bed, go home and cut the legs off the bed. I did, no more monsters under my bed. <laughs> yeah. You know, some doctors, you know, are actually a little nosier than they need to be. I know when I fill out those forms that, you know, they list all, have you had asthma, have you done, I always check the box that says I'm pregnant. And they have never ever questioned it. So I, I'm wondering why I'm filling out all these forms in the first place. Anyway, this friend of mine, guy I played tennis with, a Jewish guy, he's telling me a story. He went to the doctor. He's, uh, <coughs> I think he's uh, 60 years old. And the doctor said, Amy, he said, you're in great shape. You got the body of a 40-year-old. He said, tell me this. He said, how old was your father when he died? Did I say my father was dead? I didn't say my father. Why are you thinking my father's dead? My father's 80 years old. We're playing doubles tennis this afternoon. Oh, really? Well, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He said, well, tell me this. How old was your grandfather when he died? Did I say my grandfather was dead? My grandfather's not dead. My grandfather's 101 years old. I'm going to his wedding this Saturday. Well, that is amazing and that is wonderful to think that a guy 101 years old wants to get married. Did I say he wanted to get married? So, maybe he's got some good genes in his family. And you know, the other thing I think is these uh, doctors you know, they always run around tests. And uh, I went to the doctor. Now, <clears throat> I'm getting up there in years. I went to the doctor and to solve this particular problem, which I won't go into, it's none of your damn business. He gives me this jar and he says, I need you to go home and bring me back a sperm sample. So I said, so you wanna run some tests on my sperm? He said, yep. So I said, okay. So I went home, came back in a week like he told me, I gave him the jar, the jar's empty. 
He said, you didn't get any sperm in there. I said, Doc, let me tell you. He said, I went home and, and I tried. I tried as best I could. And then uh, I called my wife in. And my wife tried. Tried and tried. And it just wasn't working. So we called the neighbor lady over. He said, you called the neighbor lady over to help you get a sperm? So I said, I, I, I certainly did. And I'll tell you what, all three of us working separately or together just could not get that lid off of that jar. <laughs> so some of us old folks have problems that a lot of people just do not relate to. Well, thanks again for watching Ralph's Sort of True Stories. Those are a few stories about doctors, and I have a few more stories about doctors coming up in the next segment. So down there at the bottom, click that thumbs up, click that subscribe button, and click on that little bell so we can ring you up next time we get the next doctor segment loaded up. Thank you for watching. Appreciate it.